Snow Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, Think Outside, Ski Do Snowmobiles, Yamaha, Revs Your Heart, and by iPhone Lubricants, exclusively distributed by Parts Canada. Everyone who rides a snowmobile appreciates a perfectly groomed and maintained trail, but oftentimes we forget about the countless volunteer hours that made that trail possible. The question is, why do they do it? Uh, started off just wanting to go fast, ride hard, have fun. Maybe 15 years ago, started riding the groomed trails a bit, and then when I retired, I wanted to have something to keep me occupied that was functional, and I volunteered for the club and started coming out. And we do once a week, we do a club trail ride in the wintertime. And well, when I retired uh, after 36 and a half years, I, like a lot of people, you. You're used to working hard and you want something to do. I had a number of friends out here that I grew up with that uh, I don't want to say they use the word, they drew me in, <laughs> but uh, it's just a camaraderie of being with your people that enjoy the same thing as you do. Uh, I grew up snowmobiling at uh, Family Cottage in Sundridge, Ontario. So from the time I was, uh, you know, a few months old, I was uh, in the caboose behind a snowmobile. The first club I got involved with was actually a Tim and Snowmobile Club. Um, as a high school student, uh, doing my 40 hours of community service. Funding for the clubs comes from a mixture of permit sales and government grants, but oftentimes more funding is needed to complete extra projects, which is why it's so important that a couple of the manufacturers, Yamaha for example, have begun providing extra funds for the clubs and for their extra projects. Over the years, a lot of them have been criticized for making the money off selling machines and everything else and not putting anything back in. I think you're seeing a movement for a lot of the major manufacturers to, uh, to put something back into the sport. Recently, Yamaha Financial Services launched the Stay Outdoors program. I don't think anyone expects them to put millions in. We, we received one grant last year. I'm hoping to tap into dollars this year. So it's nice to see them come back in and, uh, and not just in money, there's the moral support and for the sport. From a personal level, um, you know, having your employer give back to something um, in your community, in your backyard, um, to be involved in something like that, I mean, it means an incredible amount uh, to me. That's how I, how I spend my, you know, my free time, the memories I make with my family and my friends. So um, the fact that, you know, that, that I work for a company that, you know, wants to invest in that and wants to invest in those memories in that future. I mean, that's what it's all about. While there are funds available to the clubs, there's simply not enough to pay people to work on the trails, which is why volunteers are so extremely important to the daily operations of the club. I basically was a fairly busy person. I hate to be idle, so uh, I wanted to do something. I enjoyed the snowmobiling and I wanted to to be able to put a little bit back into the communities. And you have to look at all your volunteers. Uh, we've got Steve over there, who's a Class A mechanic. We've got guys that used to change stuff. Jeff contributes, uh, especially in the technical stuff. I'm leaning on Jeff for setting up our Facebook page and things like that. Not everybody can uh, drive the groomer, but uh, each person gives you something that makes your club better. As Ken was saying, every club member is, is a link in the chain. Um, you need a host of different volunteers with different skills. So um, you think of the on the ground, um, on the snow uh, type of operation. So from your grooming to your brushing, to your trail packing, to your signage, uh, then you need different volunteers or those same volunteers with skills as far as um, speaking with landowners, dealing with council, um, working and going to meetings to work with other clubs. You know, having a diverse club with, with you know, diverse members makes a strong club. You, you've got to enjoy working with people and you've got to do it without expecting to get anything back. 
it's more about the fun. I think most of us, it's just a sense of giving something back. And I think uh, you ask any volunteer to come out, uh, you want them to work safely too. The last thing you want to do is see somebody uh, get hurt. The Bonfield Snowmobile Club is one of 289 across Ontario. And each club works to work with their neighboring club to form this network of 30,000 plus kilometers of trail. None of this would happen without the volunteers in every single one of these communities across Ontario. It's pretty special what we have, and we want to have this in the future. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Hercules Tire. Ride at our strength. Snow Tracks TV and Super Tracks Magazine have been working with FXR since its very inception and have had the privilege of wearing their latest and best gear. Because of this, I've had years to perfect my personal riding gear kit by making changes and adjustments season after season. The result of this is a gear selection I'm extremely comfortable with and one that covers pretty much any type of riding or any riding condition. FXR, of course, doesn't just do snowmobile gear. They have full lines of moto, ATV, mountain bike, ice fishing, and yes, of course, casual wear. Today, we're gonna to focus just on winter gear, which is available for both men and women, as well as kids from toddlers to teenagers. Basically, you can outfit pretty much any rider with what we think is some of the best gear in the industry, all from one place. Any good outdoor gear setup starts with the base layers, and FXR has a full line of base wear in multiple different fabrics to suit any type of rider, riding style, and riding condition. In the old days, I would simply throw on the warmest fleece sweater and pants I could find underneath my gear and hope to stay warm. But I've since learned how important it is to not necessarily use the most insulated underlayers, but instead to use the right underlayers, which work to regulate your core temperature and wick moisture, keeping you dry and comfortable. Now I'm a big guy, so my core temperature tends to run hotter than most, which is why for warmer riding days, somewhere in the zero to minus five Celsius range, I start with FXR's basic turbo athletic sock and then add on their atmosphere long sleeve shirt and pants. These are super lightweight, made of polyester materials, so they're quick drying and do an excellent job of wicking moisture. When the temps reach the minus 10 Celsius range, I switch to the Mission Performance Sock and the Endeavor Merino Hybrid Shirt and Pants, which are a combination of warmer merino fabrics on the front and lighter polyester materials on the back. Now, when things are really cold, I choose the Boost Performance Socks and the Endeavor Merino Long Sleeve Shirt and Pants. Now, the indifference between the Endeavor and the Endeavor Hybrid is that the Endeavor is made of complete merino fabric instead of a mix of materials. With these three setups, I can ride from above freezing to way below freezing temperatures and stay both warm and dry in pretty much any condition. Now let's move on to outerwear, which FXR offers in a number of different categories, and we'll be focusing just on three of them. For a strictly on-trail rider, FXR offers the Performance Trail Series. For an on-off trail rider, at low to medium elevations, they have Performance Crossover Line, and for the high elevation guys, they have the Mountain Crossover Line. The key design element to all of their jackets and pants, though, is a super durable, weatherproof, seam-sealed outer shell with strategically placed dry vents. Most of their crossover jackets have removable liners as well. Pants are offered in regular insulated or light uninsulated, depending on which style you choose. I stick to the Performance and Mountain Crossover series of outerwear, and because I run hot, I always remove my liner, but I'll explain more about that later. My favorite jackets are the Renegade FX and the Helium X. Now I wear the Renegade FX when I'm trail riding because it includes FXR's famous FAST flotation system. I wear the Helium X when I'm in the mountains where flotation, at least in water, isn't as important. Pair these up with the matching pants in either standard or light depending on where you're riding and you've got a suit that can handle whatever condition you can throw at it. I'm a huge believer in safety, which is why whenever I'm lake running, I choose a suit with fast insulation. But another essential part of my riding gear has always been, and always will be, a tech vest. Simply put, they are proven to save lives. But if you do wear one, you have to factor it into your layering system. This is why I always remove the liners from my jackets. The tech vest acts as another warmer insulating layer, so I find it way too hot to wear both the tech vest and the jacket liner. Yes, I do own a one-piece monosuit, a ranger instinct to be exact, and I love it under the right conditions. For example, I really like wearing it when I'm riding a snow bike or a widescape, or if I know I'm gonna be on and off the sled a lot. Some people swear by them, and they are available with fast insulation for trail riders and in uninsulated light versions for high altitude guys. Now the final pieces of gear we need to cover are helmets, boots, and gloves. And these are things that you'll choose largely based on personal preference and comfortable fit. For example, I wear an open face moto style helmet. 
I'm just more comfortable that way. And all I wear underneath is FXR's Cold Stop Balaclava and I'm warm even in the coldest conditions. Now I wear a blade helmet for one important reason. It's one of the few FXR offers in sizes above double XL. Now if I had a normal sized head, I would choose either the Helium Carbon due to its lightness or the ATR2 with its patented omnidirectional suspension system for optimal head protection. For boots, I've always worn the Helium Dual Boa. Now I love this boot because it's super warm and comfortable, but it's also super adjustable thanks to the Dual Boa system. It means I can wear thin socks and tighten the boot up a bit or wear thick socks and run it a bit looser. It's flexible enough that I can walk without looking like I'm in ski boots, but stiff enough that my ankles get the support they need. There are so many boots to choose from, but this pair is my favorite. Now let's talk about gloves. And when it comes to hand warmth, I have found people to be extremely different. For example, I have friends who can wear a thin glove like the transfer and never get cold. I, on the other hand, no pun intended, get cold hands, always have. So I opt for thicker pairs like the Recon and I always go with the heated version. Yes, they are expensive, but when you're riding on those super frigid days and your hot grips just don't seem to be warm enough, nothing feels better than hitting that button and feeling the heated glove warm your hands to perfection. Now, obviously, there's a ton more that we could talk about when it comes to riding gear, but if I could leave you with one piece of advice, it would be this. Having a good time riding snowmobiles has so much to do with being warm and comfortable. So buy good quality riding gear designed and built by people who actually ride snowmobiles. It really is worth every penny. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. So the big question is, does the all new Slim Jim 2.0 actually work better? Well, if you stick around, I'm gonna not just tell you if it does, I'm gonna show you. But it's that time of the year again, when the front end of your sled is starting to act all funny. And the reason it's acting all funny is because you don't have any carbide left. You've been riding too much. Great problem to have, right? Now the Slim Jim has been a very popular carbide to reduce darting and it does just that. But with this new one called the 2.0, let's take a little closer look at what makes it a 2.0 what stays the same, and most importantly, what's different. So what stays the same is the shape of the Slim Jim, the Hallmark U-shaped channel that cuts into the snow with two very obvious host bars and carbide inserts set into those host bars. However, that's pretty much where the similarities stop. From here on, Woody's has refined and tweaked just about everything. So now the changes. When it comes to the actual Slim Jim runner, it's wider, and this also allows for the channel in the middle of the Slim Jim to be wider as well. What does this help with? It helps with clogging being able to clear out, so snow's not gonna get trapped in the center. Now on top of that, the Slim Jim has become deeper. What does this do for you? Well, it pushes the carbide deeper down into the snow, and what does that do? You guessed it, helps to reduce darting even further. There's also an increase in the turndown tab that cuts into the snow to reduce overall wear. And surprisingly, with all this extra beef, the Slim Jim stays true and actually reduces overall weight, which is a bonus because it's unsprung weight. Obviously the Slim Jim 2.0 is available in four, six, and eight inch length, like pretty much every other Woody's carbide. But when it comes down to it, all this technical info that I've given you really means absolutely nothing if they don't work better. That's where the buck stops for me. So enough talk, let's get out on the trail and see if they actually do what they're supposed to. I have to start off with the baseline understanding that the previous Slim Jim did a really great job. I mean, it was the king of no darting, but it did at times feel a little less responsive in certain situations. I noticed pretty quickly that the cornering on the 2.0s are precise and controlled, especially in the snow I'm running today that's not terribly frozen down and can cause a lot of pushing in the corners. The double runners are clearing out well, and when I double back on my old tracks, I can see the defined tunnel marks left in the snow, and it's unmistakable that that was me. Now, darting does seem to be completely non-existent with the Slim Jim 2.0, but keep in mind that every day will produce different snow conditions. However, with that said, no matter what conditions you ride in, the 2.0 is going to give you the best available option for reducing darting, in my opinion. Corner-to-corner -corner control is precise and makes the front end of the Polaris feel more locked into the trail. Actually, quite a lot more like the Skidoo does. And with that, I must mention that because you have so much carbide and more importantly, so much host bar digging into the snow and ice, you're gonna need to be careful about how much carbide you wanna run. I find the four inch to be very adequate, the six inch to sometimes feel a little heavy and the eight inch to be for the extreme situations where you need that extra cutting power and are okay with the increase in steering effort. And with that in mind, I'd say the Slim Jim 2.0s truly are an evolution of the original Dooley runner that just keeps on getting better each time they update it. If you want a better and more precise front end that cuts through the snow and reduces darting, the Slim Jim 2.0 will do all of that. 
Plus, when you add in the fact that it's a dual runner carbide, this means that it's gonna reduce wear overall and give you way more miles on the trail as opposed to a single runner carbide, which means you're putting more miles on and spending less time in the shop changing carbides. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Arctic Cat Snowmobiles. The regions of Quebec by the sea. Discover our ride ideas. FXR Racing. Maximum versatility for all conditions. And by MBRP Performance Exhaust. Built for the victory lap. When the Chaos first came out, it was like a little gift from heaven for a rider like myself. It was the perfect blend of mountain sled and kind of off-trail free ride fun sled. What we have here today is a 2023 Polaris Chaos 850 Boost Slash. So what is a Chaos Slash? Well, before we go any further, I just kind of want to fill you in on what this sled actually is because it's pretty interesting. When, when a sled is called a slash from Polaris, what that means is that it's got a cutoff tunnel at the back and it's tapered. This is a 155 with a three inch paddle and a short tunnel. And basically the idea behind the short tunnel serves two purposes. First, it, it saves weight, but that's not really the reason they do it. The second reason you would cut off the end of the tunnel and in Polaris's case, actually taper the edges of it is so that the sled can dig down further in the snow. When you wheelie the sled, it doesn't, the snow flap doesn't catch in the snow as you're trenching. It makes the sled go through the snow a lot more efficiently and it makes it a lot more fun because it'll wheelie and get the nose up without dragging the tail of the sled. The Slash models come with Patriot Boost Turbo two-stroke motors, which this one has, or Polaris's new 9R motor as well. So if you order a Boost or a 9R, you're getting a Slash. That's just how it comes. First thing I want to talk about though is ergonomics, because to me, that's one of the most important aspects of a mountain sled. You can have power, you can have handling, you can have all these other things, but if the sled doesn't fit right, it's just never gonna feel right. For me, I'm 6'1", I'm a bigger guy. I can ride this sled sitting down on the trail, on the way up, and it's comfortable, but the reality is when you're riding a mountain sled, you spend most of your time standing, and this sled has absolutely fantastic stand-up ergonomics. I'm tall, I'm 6'1", I don't feel like I'm hunched over. I can stand upright and still grab the handlebars. When I get off the side of the sled, the bars are right in my waist where I want them. So for me, for a guy my height, these bars are perfect. The other ergonomic aspect of this sled that I think is fantastic is this narrow seat and tank area. This area right here in the middle where the gas cap is, where your knees are sitting, is super narrow. So when you wanna lean off the side of the sled on a side hill, you can get your body further off the sled because there's less material right here in the middle. So ergonomically, I can't come up with almost anything to complain about. The next thing I wanna talk about is handling. I put things in order when we talk about them. So I put ergonomics in order because for me, that's a really important aspect of a snowmobile. As I said, if it doesn't fit, if I'm not comfortable on it, it's gonna be hard to ride no matter how good it handles and no matter how much power it has. But to me, the second most important aspect of a mountain sled is handling. If the sled doesn't handle well in the snow, then it doesn't matter if it's got a turbo or not. It's just gonna be hard to ride. It's not gonna go where you want it to go. I feel very comfortable on this sled. I can do everything on this sled with a great level of confidence. It responds and reacts to my input and to what I want it to do very intuitively. If there was one thing I think could be improved in terms of, I guess it would combine ergonomics and handling. It seems like a weird one, but this pod right here is very high and it obstructs your view of the snow in front of you. If you're down low or if you're, if the sled's up high in front of you, if you're climbing or wheeling, um, it, it cuts off your view of the front bumper and what's directly in front of you. However, you do get a huge storage bin under here, which is great for your goggles and your spare gloves and whatever else you wanna throw in there. So that's awesome. The Chaos has this full set of Walker Evans Velocity High-Low Shocks. These are Walker Evans top, top, top of the line shocks. They're position sensitive. They're fully adjustable. They're high-low compression rebound. Part of why this sled handles so well is because it's got these shocks that can be tuned perfectly to how you want the sled to handle. So if I want the front end to be softer and I want it to articulate more, I can do that by adjusting the springs and adjusting the shocks. If I want the sled to squat more in the back, I can do that. This is a 38 inch wide ski stance on this sled. You can see the, the forged arms upper and lower. This is the mountain spindle, not the trail spindle. So this is a full on mountain front end 
with Polaris's mountain ski with grippers on top. Obviously, I'm sitting right here on the side of the sled in this great big word, boost, down the side panel. We gotta talk about boost. So Polaris's Patriot Boost is their 850 base engine with a turbo, and the turbo actually sits right here, and the exhaust can's right here. So it's very well packaged, and obviously the bodywork isn't different for a turbo versus a non-turbo two-stroke for Polaris. They're the same bodywork. Here's what I know about horsepower for a Patriot Boost. Polaris claims that it makes approximately 10% more horsepower than a naturally aspirated 850. The naturally aspirated 850, we have all assumed, we've kind of gathered information from around, is making somewhere in the neighborhood of 168 horsepower, somewhere in that neighborhood. So if you do the math, basically the Patriot Boost is probably making somewhere in the neighborhood of 185 horsepower. That's our best guess. It may be a little more, it may be a little less, and it would all depend on what dyno it's on, but that is what we feel this engine is making in terms of horsepower. It also has a belt drive, quick drive two, so it's got instantaneous power transfer with very little uh, um, centrifugal force. It's a great platform when you want to spin the track up as fast as possible. Overall, my opinions on the Chaos Slash Patriot Boost 850 155 three inch with quick drive two belt drive. If you want to have fun and you want to go out in the snow and just have an absolute blast, maybe you're not going to run the tightest tree lines. Maybe you're not going to run the most technical lines but you really wanna have the fun, this is the sled. 